Back at the end of December, I put out a video asking the question, does Australia have a Donald Trump? And in that video, I suggested that Pauline Hanson, whether you like her or not, probably fits that description for some Australians. I also repeated the rumours at the time that Cory Bernardi might form a breakaway party of Conservatives. And unless as an Australian you've been living under a rock, you know that Cory Bernardi announced last week that he had quit the Liberal Party and formed his own party, the Australian Conservatives. Now, as I pointed out in that last video, less than two-thirds of Australians voted for a major party at the last federal election. And in a survey released by the Australian National University in December, it was revealed that more Australians than ever considered voting for another party, and that trust in government is also at an all-time low. Now, taking that into consideration, have a listen to what Corey Bernardi said in his resignation speech. There are few in this place or anywhere that can claim the respect for politicians and politics is stronger today than it was 10 years ago. In short, the body public is failing the people of Australia. It is clear that we need to find a better way. The level of public disenchantment with the major parties, the lack of confidence in our political process and the concern about the direction of our nation is very, very strong. This is a direct product of us, the political class, being out of touch with the hopes and aspirations of the Australian people. Politics at its best has always been the shared contribution of men and women of conscience who bring their skills to bear for the benefit of the nation. It's not in the interests of our nation to yield to the temptation of personality politics which shrink the debate to the opinion of a few while compromising the good sense and values of the many. So clearly Bernardi is trying to ride that same populist wave that Pauline Hanson's been riding for the past 12 months. A trend that sees Hanson's One Nation Party now polling a greater share of the vote than the Greens. So what does Bernardi's exit from the LNP mean? Well, some say it will draw at least some of the Conservative base away from the Liberal Party. Not exactly what they need right now as they trail Labor 54 to 46 on a two-party preferred basis. But by some estimates, about one million Conservative voters have already defected to smaller parties, most notably Hanson's One Nation Party. So is Bernardi going to pull more Conservative votes away from the Liberal Party, or is he just going to be competing for the disaffected voters that have already jumped ship? Time will tell. Bernardi is well known in South Australia, the failed state, but doesn't have much of a national profile. Personally, I like Bernardi's brand of fiscal conservatism, lower taxes and smaller government. But I can't get excited about social conservative issues like opposing gay marriage. At the moment, Bernardi's website is light on the detail, so I'll wait to see what his grand vision entails before jumping on the bandwagon. Now, predictably, liberal heavyweights came out swinging, calling Bernardi's move a betrayal of voters who supported him at last year's election. I mean, I completely disagree with what Corey has done today. It was a dog act. Only seven months ago, Senator Bernardi was happy to stand before the people of South Australia and to say that he sought their endorsement to serve for a six-year term as a Liberal senator. Uh, it is a betrayal when somebody leaves a political party. I think people... Uh, as we said before, uh, we'll be angry about uh, any defection, angry about uh, a betrayal of the Liberal Party values. There are a lot of people who voted for Senator Bernardi and there was nothing on the ballot paper that said he was going to jump ship. So this criticism is not without merit. Bernardi used the resources of the Liberal Party to get himself re-elected to another six-year Senate term just seven months ago. But I don't think this attack by the Liberal Party, warranted or not, plays well with the public. Australians are crying out for a conviction politician that has principles and, more importantly, is willing to stand up for them. So whilst the Sydney Morning Herald portrayed Bernardi as a rat deserting a sinking ship, the spectator had quite a different view, with Bernardi in the boat deserting a sinking rat, the Liberal Party. Now, I don't know which is more accurate, but I think the important divide to take note of here is between the insiders of the political class and the outsiders that represent the populist revolt against the elites. Bernardi has opted to run with the outsiders. And for good reason. People have lost faith in the insiders. Peter Credlin describes the problem with respect to the leaders of Australia's 
two major parties. Issues authenticity, because just like the punters don't believe him, and I think they're very close to stopping listening to the Prime Minister. I think we're, I at, think that, we're, we're at that tipping point. Mm. I'd want to see two polls in a row, or, or two out of three, at those same numbers. But I think they're there, and they're, and they're not listening to them because I don't think he's authentic. You know, as I was preparing my notes, going through the polls, I'm writing down Shorten's number, BS, da 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 and I'm writing down Malcolm's MT. And I thought, you know what, Peter, that is, that is the crux yes, of the MT. problem. <laughs> one is full of BS and one is empty. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> BS on one side, which is why Shorten's not popular. The other guy is empty, doesn't stand for anything, doesn't have a plan. That's right, doesn't stand for anything and doesn't have a plan. Now, our beloved PM, Malcolm Turnbull, has been taking an absolute drubbing of late. He was rightfully made to look like a fool by Donald Trump over the hurriedly put together refugee deal made with Barack Obama just five days after Trump's election. And as mentioned earlier, the Liberal Party has slipped further in the polls to the point where if an election were held today, they would lose 16 seats to Labor and be comprehensively kicked out of government. So last week, Malcolm Turnbull hit the panic button, launching this tirade against Opposition leader Bill Shorten. Members on my right. was such a sycophant, a social climbing sycophant, if ever there was one. There has never been a more sycophantic leader of the Labor Party than this one. And he comes here and poses as a tribune of the people. He, like Harborside Mansions, he's yearning for one. He's yearning to get into Kirigilly House. You know why? Because somebody else pays for it. There was never a union leader in Melbourne that tucked his knees under more billionaires' tables than the leader of the opposition. He lapped it up. Oh, yes, he lapped it up. Members on my he right. was such a sycophant, a social climbing sycophant. Now, I have to say that warms my heart a little, not only because it brings back memories of Paul Keating, but because Bill Shorten is probably one of the most dishonest, disingenuous politicians I've ever seen. But don't take it from me. Take it from someone who worked alongside him, Mark Latham. There's a rank hypocrisy, and people are pretty smart out there. They're seeing through it. And uh, I get a lot of feedback. You know, Bill Shorten doesn't do all that well in the polls. And one of the reasons is that uh, a lot of traditional Labor voters think he's very much a hollow man. And those attacks on Turnbull when Shorten himself... You've only got to know Bill Shorten for five minutes to know the relationship he had with Pratt & Co., back in the day, and I suspect he's still got it, um, you know, it's, um, it's a double standard that eventually, eventually, even three years into the scene, was going to be held to account. But whilst character attacks make for good theatre, it's Labor's ludicrous big government policies Turnbull should be going after. And on that front, Turnbull has been soft. And even on energy policy, where Turnbull has been critical in recent days, the problem for the Liberal Party is that they can't differentiate themselves enough from Labor, because all they're offering are policies that are less bad. So in the absence of some divine intervention, Turnbull's days look numbered. Just ask Ross Cameron. He should have, he's, you know, he's in a space, he's in the zone. That's I do I think Malcolm's given up. That's the point I should have made. You know, <laughs> I, I, just think, I don't think he's going to survive because I think he's just given up. Yeah. I think he wakes up in the morning and says, I've got absolutely no fucking idea what to do when I get to the desk. <laughs> But what is the Liberal Party to do? Go back to Tony Abbott and repeat the disastrous Rudd, Gillard, Rudd revolving door with Abbott, Turnbull, Abbott? Or do they go with a new face? Peter Dutton, Barnaby Joyce, Julie Bishop? The only good news for the Liberals is that the next election is more than two years away, so they have some time to get their house in order. Whether Bernardi becomes a force to be reckoned with remains to be seen. At the moment, he's just adding to the fragmentation of the political landscape. But one thing is for sure, we are entering an interesting time in Australian politics. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, or consider supporting me on Patreon. See you next time.